In the last few lectures on William Blake, we have been trying to read the poems in the anthology called Songs of Innocence and of Experience. Innocence and Experience, th that is, the idea of innocence and experience was very important for William Blake and it was a lifelong passion for him to understand what innocence and experience were, what part they played in human life, how could we make life more meaningful, was innocence a better state or was experience a better state and was there a state beyond innocence and experience. These were the ideas that fascinated probably captivated, probably enthralled William Blake all his life. Innocence he later called also Beulah and if we look at a late work of William Blake, that is the 21 paintings on the book of Job. The book of Job, as you know, is w one of the apocryphal books of the Old Testament. It is a literary work. It is a profoundly literary work. In this work, Job, which is the name of the man, tries to find out the reasons for his suffering. He does not succeed in finding out till the end of his life, but he gains all the wealth and many times more than what he had before. This is not a satisfactory end to the suffering of Job because the end that he wanted to see was one of understanding rather than attaining the wealth, the belongings, the children that had died, his seven sons and three daughters. But the book of Job, in fact, the Bible itself fascinated William Blake and it was a lifelong companion for him. In the book of Job he saw as uh, Northrop Fry points out a microcosm of the Bible. Now let us, if you look at uh, uh, the paintings that are done in the book of Job you will be able to understand w the ideas of William Blake better. In the first painting, you see Job in Beulah, as it were. You have the sun, the moon in the sky, and Job and his wife sitting with his children his three daughters and seven sons and his sheep and his cattle. Now when you go to the 21st plate of the book of Job you find that they are still there but they are standing now instead of sitting that sun is rising in the east. The musical instruments in the first painting were hanging from the tree. Now they are all in their hands and when, while the sheep were asleep in the first painting, in the first plate, in the 21st plate, that is the last plate, you find 
Job and his children playing upon the musical instruments and the sheep are awake. Eden for William Blake was an active experience. Beulah which was an inferior heaven was a state of satisfaction of innocence which if prolonged could become an experience of dullness <coughs> of laziness of boredom these paintings probably help us understand even the songs of innocence and of experience I have been trying to show how a literary artist, especially a poet in the present case, has to be read independently. Because you, as students, don't go to classrooms every day. You don't meet your teacher. You are independent learners. And we can give you hints, we can give set examples of the ways in which literary works and artists should be tackled. In the present case, we are dealing with William Blake, but you could adopt and apply the same method of st study to a study of other poets, other writers, other novelists, other playwrights also. Let's once again read the divine image in the Songs of Innocence. The divine image reads thus, To mercy, pity, peace and love all pray in their distress and to these virtues of delight return their thankfulness for mercy pity peace and love is God our father dear and mercy pity peace and love is man his child and care William Blake and the biblical writings suggest that when you are weeping don't think that you are alone. God is nearby hearing you and weeping along with you. He commiserates with you in your misfortunes, in your sad times. For mercy has a human heart, pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. Then every man of every clime that prays in his distress, prays to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. Then every man of every clime that prays in his distress, prays to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. And all must love the human form in heathen, Turk or Jew. And all must love the human form in heathen, Turk or Jew, where mercy, love and pity dwell, there God is dwelling too. You get a feeling of the presence of God, where there is mercy, where there is pity, where there is love. Kabir had said, Dhai akhar prem ka padhai so pandit hoi. Here also, you find Blake telling us about the importance of mercy, pity, peace and love. This state is the state of innocence. This is the divine image because in a state of mercy, pity, peace and love you experience divinity. Wordsworth had said, 
God lives about us in our infancy because the infant the infant does not know hatred greed he knows love he probably also knows pity perhaps mercy so that is the state of innocence in which you find blake telling you about in a divine image <coughs> william blake tells us about the multiple visions that he saw he had probably and as biblical scholars and blake scholars have told us that he had the example of balam in his mind there were two characters balam and and balak described in the book of numbers and blake tells us that he had many visions at he had at the most fourfold vision and in the least a double vision and that double vision you can find in the bible in the numbers that is 22 to 24 where he tells tells us about bala uh, balam balam's horse could see god or god's angel standing on the road preventing him dissuading him from going to balak and helping him balam did not uh, balam did not see it in one of his letters to butts blake described a similar kind of experience he says loss flamed in my path and the sun was hot with the bows of my mind and the arrows of my thought loss flamed in my path and the sun was hot this is an experience very much like balam's in the book of numbers in the old testament loss flamed in my path and the sun was hot with the bows of my mind and the arrows of my thought my bowstring fierce with ardor breeds my arrows glow in their golden sheaves my brothers and father father much march before the heavens drop with human gore now i a fourfold vision see blake tells butts in a private letter written from written from written on the 22nd of november 1802 and i a fourfold vision see and a four and it's fourfold in my supreme delight now i a fourfold vision see and a fourfold vision is given to me it's fourfold in my supreme delight and threefold in soft bulas night and threefold in soft bulas night and twofold always may god us keep from single vision and newton sleep you know that william blake was in a way against the scientists sir isaac newton the foremost of them so 
He says, Now I a fourfold vision see, and a fourfold vision is given to me. It's fourfold in my supreme delight, and threefold in soft Beulah's night. Beulah is the lower heaven, about which we talked just now. And twofold always may goddess keep from single vision and Newton's sleep. What, what, what is Newton's sleep? Newton's sleep is Newton's awareness of only the role of reason in life. Blake called one of his poems the book of your reason. You reason. He was almost using the SMS language, we could say. So, Urizen is a god. Urizen would, you would recall, the frontispiece in, of, the, um, of Europe, the, the prophetic book written by William Blake, who there Urizen has a pair of compass in his hand. Not only there, the child Jesus also holds a pair of compass. In Newton's paintings, one of Newton's paintings. And Sir Isaac Newton suffers from this single vision because he is bent to the ground with his compass. His vision is narrow. He is not looking far and wide. He is not seeing all those things that he could see. His perception hasn't been cleansed. If his perceptions were cleansed, he could see the world as it is, which is eternity. That was how Blake thought, and he wrote in The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. So, Blake tells us that he always saw twofold vision, and he wants to remain away from God's single vision, from, from, Newton, from Newton's single vision, and which he calls his sleep. However, and you would notice in the picture of Newton that he is so engrossed in his scientific pursuit that he has become part of the rocks. The idea must have come to him from Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, who was a lady of the rocks. William Blake wants us to have at least the double vision if not the fourfold vision which would allow us to see the world as it really is a powerful image a powerful experience a rich experience which can be often be, be even heavenly what was the meaning of and how could one reach that kind of experience? It was through experience. Experience tells us, experience gives us the ability to see more than what we ever saw as in our state of 
innocence. In his everlasting gospel, he writes about Joseph of Arimathea, who tells who Joseph of Arimathea, as you know, Joseph of Arimathea, as you know, had made the hewn coffin, the rock the rock-hewn cof coffin for Jesus' body from which he returned to life on the seventh day. Joseph of Arimathea, it is believed, went to England to found the church at Glastonbury and that is why he is important for a Britisher. What are those things that bring us the experience? What brings us experience? is nature. Nature is rough and painful. The shower, the heat, the cold, all as it were bring pain to humanity. Then there is this agent of disease. In the book of Job, there was fire which burned some of his property. Then there was there were the Sabians, the people the Sabian people who came and carried away Job's cattle. Then there was an earthquake which made the house in which his children were feasting fall and the children died. And finally Blake is himself suffering from boils and he is sitting outside what used to be his house near a dung heap and scratching his wounds with a potsherd. These experiences bring him knowledge. So experience is a necessary state in the growth of a human soul. Blake saw these in himself and he thought that human beings grew out of suffering because suffering brings knowledge, suffering brings, li uh, brings light, suffering brings the end of suffering and it takes us to heaven that is Eden. One of the elements that brings us experience is love. Love's temple that God dwelleth in and hide in secret hidden shrine the naked human form divine and render that a lawless thing on which the soul expands its wings 
But this, O oh Lord, this was my sin, when first I let these devils in, in dark pretense to chastity, blaspheming love, blaspheming thee, thence rose secret adulteries, and thence did covet also rise, my sin thou hast forgiven me, canst thou forgive my blasphemy? Love, which is called naked human form divine, at one point, that brings in all other vices. In itself, it is pure and perfect. But in the world in which we live, it is a source of pain and suffering. He says, thence rose, thence rose secret adulteries, and thence did covet also rise. Then you began to covet someone, feel envious to, towards another person. My sin thou hast forgiven me, canst thou forgive my blasphemy? Canst thou return to this dark hell, and in my burning bosom dwell? And canst thou die that I may live? And canst thou pity and forgive? Then roll the shadowy man away from the limbs of Jesus to make him, them his prey, an ever devouring appetite, glittering with festering venoms bright, crying, crucify this cause of distress, who don't keep the secrets of holiness, or melt in all mental powers, by diseases we bind, but he heals the deaf and the dumb and the blind. When God has aff afflicted for secret ends, he comforts and heals and calls them friends. So, in, from Blake's point of view, what is experience and what is, what is experience and what is innocence go hand in hand. They go together. Innocence is not enough in itself. Experience shows us, as it were, divinity for a time. But that state is not perfect either. If you look, if we look once again at some of the plates in the book of Job, we would find that this idea has been explained so well by Blake. In plate second, as Northrop Fry has pointed out, we see a God who is helpless, who is there out in the heaven, and his work has been taken over by Satan, and he is active. And Job, not yet out of his state of innocence, it's looking askance at the doings of Satan. Thereafter, Satan becomes the ruler. God has been removed, as it were, in plate three. And he decides what is going to happen and he brings havoc it says the notes on the uh, plates say thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote upon the four faces of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. These are lines from the book of Job. So as I pointed out to you, experience comes to us from harsh nature. That is one of the greatest sources of experience. Then, in plate 4, you have Job and his wife sitting together and someone bringing him a message and I only am escaped alone to tell thee while he was 
yet speaking there came also another and said the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the flocks and the young men and consumed them and I only am escaped alone to tell thee so it's fire it's a it's a uh, the thunderbolt that brings experience that destroys all your life's work all your savings all your earnings at one go in plate 5 you again have a very helpless God a helpless Jehovah at the top while Satan is active and Job below is has been humbled he is no longer the satisfied Job the happy Job of plate one when he lived with all his sons and daughters and thereafter you have in plate six where Satan gives Job sore boils the note says and smote Job with sore boils for the sole of his foot to the crown of his head this is what happens to us disease and sickness and problems of health bring experience when f fair weather friends desert us they leave us alone to suffer in our agony Job's words are there on the top of the plate naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord who is the Lord here there is no Lord he who dominates the whole scene as it were is Satan and Satan in the book of Job goes to God frequently he hasn't touched Job without his permission so in the book of Job when we read it with the eyes of William Blake we find Satan being in complicity with God in bringing about suffering to mankind William Blake thought of faith as something superfluous because faith in a God who is remote from us who is distant is not the true felicitous state in which we should we should be in poor spiritual knowledge is not worth a button for thus the gospel sir Isaac confutes God can only be known by his attributes and as for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost or of Christ and his father it's all a boast and pride and vanity of imagination that disdains to follow his world's fashion to teach doubt and experiment certainly was not what Christ meant what was he doing all that time from 12 years old to manly prime was he then idle or the less about his father's business or was his wisdom held in scorn before his wrath began to burn in miracles throughout the land that quite unnerved Lord Caiaphas hand William Blake 
wanted to is it over? William Blake tried to explain innocence and experience and understand innocence and experience within the mind of man God and Satan are not external beings living outside us they are within us we experience them through our faculty of experiencing life as it were. Thank you.